very good morning to everyone here. My name is Riya Sahani and as the Speaker of the Opposition, it will be my duty to bring under light the many arguments of the proposition and render them futile. Now coming to the midday meal schemes that the proposition said, that they are positive incentives, yes. But aren't there families that are financially unstable and send their, school, uh, their children to schools for the sake of a midday meal? And as soon as they turn 14, they complete the child labor laws because they, uh, child labor can be enforced after 14 years of age. And also, they get free food. So, hopefully that answers your question that midday meals, uh, although they act as a positive incentive to a certain point, you cannot compulsify education beyond that. Now, there are so many arguments that the proposition uh, proposed, which were based on rabbinic claims. Yes, we agree as the opposition that education is important, but no, there are certain parameters upon which education must be provided. Now, it is assumption of the proposition to assume the uh, opposition's arguments. Well, sir, let me uh, say that your argument was correct. We will, we will raise questions of the quality of education. Now it needs to be noted by the proposition that there are certain resources available to the governments of developing and underdeveloped countries. These limitations, they lead to lesser expenditures on vocational activities and facilities. There are lesser amount of sports complexes and auditoriums that are being built. So how do you expect to provide a child with holistic development when there are no such vocational activities that are being provided at the government school level, at the public school education level? Now a person that is simply interested in vocational activities and not in academics, how do you expect them to how do you expect them to attend school which is compulsory for them now? Won't it be denied? Now making education compulsory will and it will obviously lead to the hindrance of creativity in the minds of the young young children. There will be lack of lack of innovation among them because a simple standardized curriculum will be imposed upon their minds. Um, now, denied. Also, the uninterested people, there will be no backup. There will be no backup reminder for them, such as money, making education free, uh, a minimal charge, even a small amount. It gives them a sense of responsibility towards at least themselves or their parents that some money is being invested in the in a long term beneficial uh, act of education. Point of information. Okay. Uh, to start with uh, paying for your own education, well, with the vast majority of the world living in terrible poverty, the uh, fact remains that when we pay for education, we are becoming less responsible for our education and we are suffering the causes of losing out on that money. So how does your argument stand? Sir, will you please frame your question in a way that is understandable for everyone? Yeah, sure. Yes. So when the thing is, uh, a large I'm population, free, yeah, a large population of the world live in pro in poverty, and they cannot afford to pay even this minimal charge. So this minimal okay. charge will Thank not sir. induce their responsibility. Sir. Now, coming back to your argument later, I will raise the point of the financially unstable families. Here. How do you expect them to change the backward mindset? Because for them, an earning hand is better than a learning hand. It is them who believe that it is better if I send my child for work rather than send him or her for an, educa for an education. How do you expect them to change their backward mindset? And I hope that will... Okay, uh, so changing their mindset. If you know that most of the child labor today happens in informal sectors where the children are paid way below minimum wage. So, and they cannot afford a proper meal with that money. A midday meal scheme, for example, gives them the nutrition. Sir, I just said that the midday meal scheme will be, will be applicable to a certain age after which the parents who do not believe in providing their children with education will take advantage. That they have, uh, they have uh, diverted from the child labor laws and have taken care of the midday meals. They have eventually, to a certain extent, made their children healthy and also provided them with a healthy environment for them and after which they can work. So hopefully you can strengthen your arguments based upon the opposition's points. I hope that answers your question, sir. Now, the problem that making education free and compulsory is not, it is, it is a major problem. It is not the solution. There is a complete mismatch between them. And the opposition will choose to say exceptional examples that free education, those people who were not able to uh, get a free education, they have become uh, the 
They have top civil services and etc. etc. Well, even the opposition which seems to give you exceptional examples. Einstein and uh, Edison, they were school dropouts, yet they managed to uh, be commendable in their respective fields. It was their uninterested behavior that led them to something bigger in life. It was not simple school, road learning, education that led them to be, be recognizable in the world today. So hopefully that answers all the proposition's arguments and it will help them strengthen their case and make policies which are beneficial for everyone and, and uh, provide provisions to a certain extent. Thank you.